God is so good. He loves us so much. And what else can we do except to go out to share this word and let this word fill the earth so that all his people will return to him? Today's title is The Omitted Generations from the Third Period of Jesus' Genealogy. The content of the lesson is taken from the fifth book in the History of Redemption series, The Promise of the Eternal Covenant, God's Profound Providence as Revealed in the Genealogy of Jesus Christ. So, where is the genealogy of Jesus Christ recorded in the Bible? You can find it in two places in the Bible. The first record is in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 17, and this is also called the Matthew genealogy. The second place is in Luke chapter 3, verses 23 to 38, and this is also called the Lucan genealogy. So this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ recorded in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 17. So in Matthew chapter 1, verse 17, we can see here, so all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. The genealogy of Jesus Christ is divided into three periods of 14 generations. So the first period is from Abraham to David. The second period is from David to the deportation to Babylon. The third period is from the deportation to Babylon to Jesus Christ. So the first period in the genealogy of Jesus Christ is from Abraham to David. And that is from 2166 BC, the birth year of Abraham, to 1003 BC, which is the year of reign of David in Hebron. So if we take that, we will have 1,163 years of history within the first period. So these are your 14 generations, from Abraham to King David. The second period is from David to Josiah, which is the second deportation to Babylon. So that will be from 1003 BC to 597 BC. So if you take that, you will have 406 years of history within the second period. So these are the names of the 14 generations. We have David and to the 14th generation, Josiah. So the third period is from Jeconiah to Jesus Christ. So this is from 597 BC to the birth of Jesus in 4 BC. So if you take that, you will have 593 years of history within the third period. So you will have from Jeconiah to Jesus Christ. And for the first time in history, Reverend Abraham Park the author of the History of Redemption series revealed that there are actually omitted generations in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. So in the third book, The Unquenchable Lamb of the Covenant, Reverend Abraham Park revealed that there are two periods of omitted generations. So it's from Ram to Aminada, that is the 400 years of 430 years of slavery in Egypt, and then we have Salmon to Boaz, the 300 years of the time of the judges. And in the fourth book, 
God's profound and mysterious providence, you will see omitted generations in the second period from Jerome to Uzziah. You have three kings and one queen who were omitted. And in the fifth book, the promise of the eternal covenant, there is also omitted generations that Reverend Abraham Park revealed through this series. So, through the three books in the history of redemption, we know that the genealogy of Jesus Christ is not a consecutive record of all generations without omissions. It's actually a genealogy with many omitted generations. So, the Bible compressed 2,162 years of Old Testament history from Abraham to Jesus Christ into the Matthew genealogy recorded in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 16. So in a seeking, sorry, in a single sweeping view of 16 short verses consisting of mostly names, our Lord Jesus was introduced through this genealogy as the very essence of the Old Testament and the basis of the New. So he is the one who is the turning point in the entire history of mankind. And within this genealogy, we can see God's administration of the mystery which he had planned before the ages and will accomplish without fail. And the promise of the woman's seed was fulfilled with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in this genealogy. So, If this is a genealogy of Jesus Christ, the heavenly genealogy, how can there be omitted generations? In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So the heart of our Lord is for all of us to turn back to God. So how much does it take for one to be omitted from this genealogy? Just like how God, in his love, cast Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden after the fall, let us also be able to see God's love for all of us during that time and us in these omissions. So in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 13, in verse 11 it says, Since all these things are tasked to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? By examining the generations that were omitted in this genealogy, let us come to realize what sort of people we ought not to be and also ought to be in order not to be omitted and to be included in this genealogy of Jesus Christ. So today, we are going to look at part four in the fifth book of the series. So we are going to look at the genealogy of Jesus Christ gaps in the third period. And within part four, we are going to zoom into chapter nine. We are going to look at the generations omitted from the third period in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and that's from page 160 to 169. So the third period in the genealogy of Jesus Christ is recorded in Matthew chapter 1, verses 12 to 16. And within this chapter, we are going to look at four points. First point, several indications for omissions in the third period. Second point, the third, sorry, the three kings whose name were not recorded. And 
third generations omitted between Zerubbabel and Abihud, and fourth generations omitted between Abihud and Jesus Christ. So, firstly, we look at the several indications for omissions in the third period. First, we'll look at the length of time. So, the third period in the genealogy of Jesus Christ spans about 593 years of history over 14 generations from Jeconiah to Jesus. So, Jeconiah was taken to Babylon in 597 BC, and Jesus was born in 4 BC. So if we take 597 minus 4, we have 593 years of history here. So under the assumption that there is no omitted generation, each generation will average about 46 years. Why do I say so? If you take 593 years, you divide it by 13, you have 46 years. But this is much longer than the average reckoning of 25 to 30 years per generation. So this is clear evidence that there are omitted generations in this third period. Next, we compare it with the Lucan genealogy. In Matthew genealogy, there are 27 generations from Solomon all the way to Jesus. In the Lucan genealogy, there are 42 generations from Nathan to Jesus. So if we take that, 42 minus 27, there's a difference of 15 generations across the two genealogy. So this is clear evidence that there are many omitted generations in the genealogy of Jesus Christ recorded in Matthew chapter 1. And next, we compare it with the genealogies recorded in Chronicles. So in 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verses 19 to 24, we can see the lineage of Zerubbabel as such. So we have Zerubbabel, Hananiah, Shekaniah, Shemaiah, Neriah, Eloniah, and Hodaviah. But in Matthew chapter 1, verse 13, we can see that Abihud, is recorded right after Zerubbabel as his descendant. So if we compare it to the records in Chronicles, there was no record of Abihud being Zerubbabel's son. So this infers that several generations between them have been omitted. Secondly, we look at the three kings whose names were not recorded. They are Jehoahaz, Jehoakim, and Zedekiah. So, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 11, we can see here, And Josiah, the father of Jeconiah and his brothers, at the time of the deportation to Babylon. So, over here, we can see that Jeconiah is recorded as, yes, Josiah's son. But in 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 15, we see over here the sons of Josiah, Johona, the firstborn, the second, Jehoiakim, the third, Zedekiah, the fourth, Shalom. So Josiah actually had four sons, but Jeconiah, who is also Jehoiachin, was not listed as Josiah's son. So the question now is this, who exactly is Jeconiah? We find the answer in 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 6. So Joachim slept with his fathers, and Joachim, his son, reigned in his place. So now we can see clearly here that Jehoachim is actually Joachim's son. So that makes Jeconiah, who is Joachim, Josiah's grandson. And in this book, Reverend Abraham Park has put together all the names under this one table. 
So it's very clear here, in the Matin genealogy, we only see Josiah followed by Jeconiah. So all the people in between, which is Jehoahaz, Jehoakim, and after Jeconiah, there's Zedekiah, these three people are not listed in the Matian genealogy. So comparing all the records in the Bible, we can see that these are the three kings whose name was not recorded in Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 to 17. Next, we look at the generations omitted between Jerubabel and Abihud. So in Matthew chapter 1, verse 13, we can see here, and Jerubabel, the father of Abihud, and Abihud, the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim, the father of Azor. Abihud over here is recorded as the descendant of Jerubabel, or so-called the son. But if we look further into 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verses 19 to 24, where the lineage of Jerubabel is listed, we do not see Abihud at all. So this is one of the mysterious and profound fact that was revealed through the history of redemption series. In Hebrew, Abihud is a combination of the word ab, meaning father, and the word ho, meaning majesty or glory. So Abihud means father of glory, father is glory, father of majesty, father is majesty. And the last generation of Zerubbabel is Hudaviah. So his name means the glory of the Lord or the majesty of the Lord. So the meaning of his name is similar to the meaning of Abihud. So it's possible then to infer that they are the same person. So if Hodabiah is Abihud, there are actually five names over here that are omitted in this genealogy. So next, we look at the generations omitted between Abihud and Jesus Christ. Before we ask this question, we have to look at another question. Is Shitiyah and Jerubabel in the Matian genealogy the same Shitiyah and the same Jerubabel in the Lucan genealogy? So, in Matian genealogy in Matthew chapter 1, we can see over here in verse 12, Shittia, the father of Jerubabel, and verse 13, and Jerubabel, the father of Abihud. And in Lucan genealogy, in Luke chapter 3, we can see here in verse 27, the son of Risa, the son of Jerubabel, the son of Shittia, the son of Neri. So Reverend Abraham Park has put together this table again in page 166 of the fifth book. So within this table, we can see very clearly that the father of Shittia is different, right? In the Matian genealogy, Shittia's father is Jeconiah, whereas in the Lucan genealogy, Shittia's father is Neri. And Risa, who is the descendant of Zerubbabel in the Lucan genealogy, is not found in the Matian genealogy, or the genealogy in Chronicles. So if we compare the number of generations in the Matian and Lucan genealogy, we also can conclude that Shitia and Zerubbabel in the Matian genealogy cannot be the same persons in the Lucan genealogy. And in page 168 of the fifth book, Reverend Abraham Park has put together this table for us. So if you see in Matthew chapter 1, we have David, who 
was born in 1040 BC. And Abihud was born around 420 BC. So between Abihud and Jesus Christ was born in 4 BC, there's a total of nine persons between them in the Matian genealogy. So that makes a total of 11 persons. But in Luke chapter 3, we can see David too. And Judah in the Lucan genealogy was also a person who exists around the same period as Abihud. And from Judah to Jesus, there's about 16 persons in the Lucan genealogy. So there's a total of 18 persons, right? So if we put them together, there's actually a difference of seven generations between the two genealogy. And if we look at the time period, it's from 420 BC to 4 BC. So if we take this time period and we divide by 11 generations for the Matian genealogy, we have 42 years of average generational interval. And this is about 1.7 times greater than the average generational interval of 24.7 years in the Lucan genealogy. So based on this fact, it's quite evident that there are approximately seven generations omitted between Abihud and Jesus Christ in this third period of the Matian genealogy. So just like it is written in Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. So everything written in the Bible is for a reason. Even the omissions in the genealogy of Jesus Christ is for a reason. So now I will conclude. By examining the omissions in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, we come to realize that the omissions are real. So if the omissions are real, it means that the people who are supposed to be in the heavenly genealogy can be ousted out too. So what does it mean for all of us today? The question to us, how much does it take for one to be omitted from the genealogy if God loves us so much? And how much does it take for one to be included? Just like the team verse of the History of Redemption series, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations, ask your father and he will show you, your elders and they will tell you. As we remember the days of old, as we consider the years of many generations, our Father will show us, our elders will tell us. And as we come to this, consider the years of many generations in the genealogy, let us also seek to know God's heart. Let us also seek to discover God's mysterious and profound administration hidden within. Let us come to know who God really is and how He works in His history of redemption. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, it says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So may we become the people that God revealed the secret things to. And through the books in this History of Redemption series, we come to understand the secret benchmark of God. How much does it take to stay in the genealogy and how much does it take for us to be omitted? So God has determined who is to stay and who is to be omitted in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Let us be the one who is in and let us not be the one who is out. 
we must seek to become people who live our lives obeying His Word so that all of us, including our families, our friends, all the people in your villages, all the people in your country may be included in the heavenly genealogy of our God. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, you are love. You have caught us, you have redeemed us, and you have put us in your history of redemption. Help us to come to know who you really are, and help us to lean close to your bosom and hear your very heartbeat to know what you want us to do and where you want us to go. And we come to realize your will through your word. Help us to have your courage your strength and your zeal to run and fulfill your will for you. And may your history of redemption may be fulfilled through each and every one of us who go out to proclaim your word. And we pray for your word to be spread to the whole of this earth, just like the waters cover the seas. And may you be with all of us, strengthen us, help us to run on, help us to take the baton and complete this race for you. And in the end, may we be able to stand before you and you are able to tell us, well done, my child. You will receive the crown of everlasting life from me. We thank you, Father, for your love, for never letting us go, for being with us every step of the way. And as we keep your word, you are there. You are Jehovah Shama, and we pray and we ask for your wisdom and your guidance and your lead for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.